Hey everyone, welcome to Live with Lisa on Thursday. I love Thursdays, they go really fast for me. But I'm just gonna do a couple of announcements before we jump in today's show. Today's show is gonna be two parts. So we're going to have a little break and then we're gonna go upstairs and do a tutorial for Black Star Flower Farm. All right, and hang on till the end because we're not gonna pick winners for this live until the very end of that tutorial. All right, we're gonna make you hang around for a while. How mean is that? All right, so just a couple quick announcements. Uh, we're gonna go through the clubs just as a reminder. Uh, August 21st is our next featherweight class. August 21st is also burning a social. We're gonna run those together. August 22nd is our next sit and sew, and that is an AM session. We had a blast on Tuesday. Uh, some of us stayed until midnight, so um, last Tuesday and got some stuff done. August 23rd, my friend Darcy was with me. That's why we stayed till midnight. August 23rd, Wool Club. August 23rd, Cross Stitch Club. Yep, same day. August 27th, Rug Hooking Club. And then let's do some cool reminders about who's coming to the gathering. We just had, I think, nine days with Jen Kingwell. Totally awesome. So in love with her. Love her even more now, right? When you get to spend more time with them. And she's just a wonderful lady. So if you can get a chance to do any of these, these are all awesome people coming. So next up, we have Doug Lico, and that is September 14th class with him. And what's really fun about Doug's project, you can use any fabric. So if you don't want, if you're on a budget and don't want to buy anything, you can just go to your collection and pick out like a fat coated tower or something like that to work with. You don't have to uh, buy anything special for that class. You can use what you already have. And then Katie Puckett is back for rug hooking and they're going to do a three dimensional object there, but you can also work on whatever you want. Do not have to go do this project that she is teaching. And that is the 18th of September through the 22nd. Then I am doing all things pumpkin and that is Saturday the 23rd. I thought it was two days, but I guess maybe there's only openings in this one or maybe I'm wrong. But Saturday the 23rd from 10 to 4.30 and we have a blast and do all kinds of pumpkin stuff. Uh, of course, I'm going to do projects and then lattes and um, lunches, pumpkin themed and pumpkin desserts and pumpkin, 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 right? All right. And then we have on November 7th, we have Jill Shawless coming and she's going to do paper piecing or foundation piecing. I think it's foundation piecing. So those funky curves that have all the points on them, she's going to teach you how to make those. And then on two days, Friday the 10th through the Saturday the 11th, Linda Hershka is coming to teach her amazing skills at custom machine quilting. And whether you're doing it on a long arm, a sit down, your domestic machine, you're gonna learn how to do that and how to mark and how to do all those tricks that she has figured out and she's willing to share with you. And then November 14th, we have our primitive Christmas sip, sew, shop, and stay. That's a lot of S's, all right? And this leads right into our biggest event of the year, which is primitive Christmas, which is that Thursday before Thanksgiving, um, the week before Thanksgiving. So it's like the opening weekend for deer hunting if you're from Wisconsin, you'll know exactly what that means. But November 14th through the 16th, so you got like come in on the 14th, at 3 p.m. and then you check out on Thursday. So you have all those days and you get to shop first for our Primitive Christmas event. And then October 7th, which I'm going back, I don't know how I shuffled them out of order. October 7th, we have Kathy Decker teaching Punch Needle, which is so popular. And then December 4th through the 10th of December, you're gonna hang out with me for a whole week and we are gonna do things naughty and nice referring to Christmas, all right? So that's always a fun event. We go on a field trip. We do all kinds of fun, different ideas. So look what came in the mail yesterday, all right? My favorite magazine. So uh, you know I love this magazine, and I am in it here and there, not on a regular, race, regular basis, but through the years. So I just want to point out a couple cool things in case you don't get this magazine. I want you all to get this or go to your... Uh, local grocery store or bookstore and buy it off the shelf there so they keep it 
keep getting it. So look at that beautiful quilt on the cover. Isn't that amazing? All right, so Pat Sloan has a quilt in here. And then uh, Vicki McCarty has a quilt that has wool applique on. So that was fun. I love that. And then um, look at this one. So I don't know this person, Diane Harris. She has houses and pumpkins and kind of a, you know, a color theme that's not really, really fallish, but super cool. And then, of course, I think this one, oh, this was kind of cool because it's a quilt and it's just two colors, black and white. And that's cool. But then look what they did. The, the people who, um, let's see, who did this one? Mm, Jill Haworth. Or no, that's who the collection is from Riley Blake. They took her fabrics and just fussy cut them into this Christmas line. This is the same quilt. Yeah, uh-huh. So see how cool that was? And then where is, look at this, a bucket for your Halloween candy. Trick or treat, smell my feet. We all said that, right? Admit it. You said it. I did. I know it. 50 miles down the street. All right, and then last but not least, Miss Figgy, she is the cover girl, all Hallow's Eve. We all have some of that fabric. She just keeps making it, repurposing it, keep adding to your collection, use your leftover. So again, American Patchwork and Quilting, awesome magazine. Do we have any questions before we uh, begin our little trunk show? Yep, American Patchwork and Quilting, the magazine. Only one I've ever been in. Do you carry that magazine in your shop? We do not. We do not. I subscribe to this. This is, if it, you know, comes in the mail to my house, you get such a super deal. Go and subscribe to it. Or, like I said, go to the, the uh, your grocery store. It, my Piggly Wiggly here in Wisconsin carries this magazine as well. But I wanted to make sure I didn't miss one. And if you subscribe, you actually get it earlier than anywhere else. So that's a, lot, a little perk too. And they always have tons and tons and tons of good projects in there. Okay, so before we do the trunk show, and I know you've seen this trunk show before, but just did it while I was gone. And, um, you know, I kind of really love my project. So I want to I want to do a trunk show too, because now the fabric is here and the kits are shipping and everything. I think... I think everything is kitted. We're not gonna put it out on the floor because I'm gonna explain to the, that to you in a minute, but let's just talk about these were the two blocks you had to do this past week right here. Oh, Heidi, I was gonna show them my boo-boos in the last block. No, we'll show them upstairs. If you can dig them out when we run up there. So what I'm talking about is um, at the last minute, you know, sometimes, so we all do this, right? We are make. I was making those blocks, and I had the the two stars were so close together in fabric that I had one print from this block and one print from this block in each. So one triangle from the other made it into my quilt. How did I do that? But guess what? I'm leaving it. I'm not changing it. I don't care. I could rip it out, but I'm not gonna because you know what? Sometimes life happens, and it's not perfect, and we just go with it. So Heidi's like, you need to switch these around. I did it in Photoshop for you. <laughs> so when you saw those blocks on the blog, Heidi switched them. But that's not real life. She used her hocus pocus magic couldn't and switched them. You couldn't tell, could you? All right. Okay, so this week's winner for posting her two Twilight Stars blocks is Robin Winall. You are the winner, Robin. So you're going to join that club of getting her getting the um, prize package and a chance at winning the grand prize of getting your quilt quilted. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at her picture because she posted that little troll in her picture. Yeah, you gotta check it out. Oh, that is so cute. I didn't see that. <laughs> see, that's what you gotta do to grab Heidi's attention, <laughs> right, Heidi? Yep. It's all about the stuff. All right, so down here, I'm just gonna have Kaylee show you a little pan of kind of what's going on. Now, we are getting ready. For the only quilt show we are going to do this year and it is in madison wisconsin and i think it's called like the great wisconsin quilt show uh, and don't if i got that mixed up a little bit that's just i don't have a script you know i just wing this so great wisconsin quilt show it is the 7th through the 9th or 10th or something like that and you heard us talk about it before 
We are going to sponsor a classroom where people are going to sit down at a long arm or stand up at a long arm. Or I don't know, whatever, sit down at it. And they're going to learn ruler work and take all kinds of classes. So if you have not looked at the website yet for that, go there and have some fun with that and join us. 7th through the 9th. 7th through the 9th. And they can go to quiltshow.com. All right, quiltshow.com. You can see the classes there. You can see the times that the quilt show is open, all that kind of stuff. And guess what? It's only an hour and a half from Primitive Gathering. So we're going to do make several trips down there because we have all kinds of equipment to bring down there. All right, so uh, we are not finished. This is just the beginning of setting up a quad. So we're only on this one little corner of the quad. And have you noticed this quilt behind me while I was talking? Right, total distraction, right. All right, so I wanna go through the projects with you because we have all of the fabrics on. No more pre-order, it is here. You can get it right now. So this is a quilt that I made out of the book and it's called Hallelujah. Why do you think we named it that? I got a pretty good idea. All right, hallelujah, praise Jesus, I'm done. All right, <laughs> making little one inch half square triangles, but it's doable, It's we do it systematically. If you hung out with me, I know it's not the first time you've seen these little bitty triangles, but here's the book. This book is so fabulous, so pictures in it are great. Quilted by Wendy Fuller, that is custom quilted. Sometimes you have to pay the money to do the custom work here on some of these that uh, deserve it. This is 74 by 74. We have a super chat. We have a super chat. I, I don't have a monitor, so I don't get to see that. So who's 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 giving us a little sticker or whatever it is? Dot, dot, Denise. Dot, dot, Denise. Denise. Oh, she's so awesome. Yes, Denise. You are the best. Thank you so much for supporting us in our little endeavors. All right. So let's just go follow the book here or follow the thing here. We have some ornaments. And the ornaments are right here on this page, right here, 60 and 68. I think I would have them all marked, but I don't, right? Okay, so my friend Gloria, she had designed, we're missing one. Oh no, we're miss, we have the reindeer, the Santa, and a poinsettia. Those are the three ornaments right but then i couldn't help myself i'm like well what i should make this poinsettia in like this variegated pink and the beautiful cream so you see them here as a trio and then you will see them as a trio of poinsettias too so if you make a annual ornament these are great easy to do very simple and not too expensive, all right? So Gloria designed them and I just remade them for our book with our wools so we could kit them for you. So, all right, next up, let's do the little cross stitch up here, way up high, Kaylee. Can you show the cross stitch? That is done by Kaylee, Katie Nolan and it's called Cross Stitch Santa. So it is on kind of like a cream Ada cloth and in a beautiful frame. But isn't that just fun and easy, doable for a beautiful Christmas gift? Okay, and that is, let's see what size that one is. Did we not put that in here? Hmm. Okay, so it depends on what count Ada that you use for that. So it's somewhere around you know, 18 by 20, 16 by 18, or 14 by 17, depending on what size foundation that you use. Okay, then let's talk about the garland. I didn't know if you can see it, but it's up here on this quilt. So that's a little Christmas garland up there. And remember, we have kits for everything that I'm talking about up here. So the garland, called Garland of Joy, and that is nine foot. So we made that nine feet long. You, of course, can make more of them. You can make it shorter, you can make it longer, but we do have kits. The one kit will make one nine foot, and they are 
double-sided. So when they're on your tree and they turn, they'll be perfect. There's not a plain side. Or if you don't, if you only want to stitch one side, you could put one of the prints of the Joyful Gatherings line on the back side, and that would still look pretty if it flipped. But they weren't hard to stitch at all. Because you know, I'm always stitching under over a deadline. Look at it in the book. It has a little Dear Santa. It's a little page that you can copy and hand this out to your people. And it's what I want, what I need, what I'll wear, and what I'll read. Isn't that awesome? So you can have all your people fill that out for you. So then you know what to get them and they get something they want. All right. And that next up is, let's move over here to this guy. Let's just go get this guy here. He is called holly jolly christmas it's 16 by 26 and we did make this board for him to hang on and he is not he's not a stand it's a wall you know with a hook here that you hang on the wall uh to put like on a wall instead of standing like this right here ours is just propped up there right now but um again just simple, easy. And this, I had this as a rectangle, like a banner, but I thought it was kind of boring. So I just started chopping it up to make it look more like a tree. And then I think it's much more interesting this way. All right, come on over and come on in here. I want to show something that's in here. Um, this is uh, Don't Get Your Tinsel in a Tangle Pillow. It is an 18 by 18 pillow. And like I said, not too much work. We can get that done fairly quickly. And of course, you know that I always put a zipper in the back here, a little covered zipper, put that in. But I just love that. I love stitching words too. All right, I got a little peek here for you. We have a, this is kind of like a, a intermission in the in these quilts. So, you know, we do our Christmas boxes and our it's almost ready to ship out. Well, this show is not until like the weekend after Labor Day. So we have our Christmas box items in here to sell at the show. But if you sign up for the box right now before we ship it, it's 40 percent off. So I'm going to give you a little peek at one of those projects, maybe two. I probably could give you a peek at two. So I think I already gave you a peek at one. All right, so I gave you a little peek at this guy. So this is a mat. And he is beautiful. It's, it's Old Father Christmas, and he has some little critters by him, a little raccoon and a little squirrel. So that's just a sneak peek. Now, once this box ships, it becomes a different price. So if you want to get it at the lowest price, Order it now or soon before we ship it out. Okay, here's another little peek at one of the projects in the Christmas box. All right, so it's a little mini quilt. I don't want to give it away, but I want to show you a peek. So this is a peek. I folded it up so you only got a little sneak. I'm terrible, aren't I? It's just killing you. All right, I'll put those back in there. So that has nothing to do with the Christmas book, those two things. Okay, so don't get that confused. I know, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. I work on Christmas almost all year round, I swear. All right, but this little beauty right here is another mat that's in the book. So this one, I believe, is called White Poinsettia, or Joyful Poinsettia Table Mat. So isn't that beautiful? It's got some, kind of looks like three-dimensional little roses on there, little buds. All right, and it's got homespun on the back. Perfect for a candle or some bottle brush trees and a little truck or whatever. You know, you can put whatever you want on there. I'm kind of not a candle person anymore. I don't do many candles. So, all right. I think we got all the little projects in the book. Nope, we got to do the stockings. All right, stockings. I love making stockings and these quilted with these little mini pieces are super fun. Now, do you see what this is? Three flying geese. You're not making that. You're making three, four flying geese the same size and then you're just chopping off the bottoms to make them littler and tiny. So don't think you're doing this little bitty tiny piecing. This is the same size. We just chop off the bottom. 
make them skinnier. All right, so super easy, uh, especially if you starch, okay? So there's nothing too hard about it. You just got to line them up and stitch them with that quarter inch, and you can do that. Starch, perfect quarter inch, and pressing seams open really helps with those things. And then we quilted them before we made the stockings. So that gives it another added feature to those beautiful stockings. All right, so on the, this one right here, this quilt is called Wrap Session. And like I said, all of these, do you think Jess has them with Live with Lisa today for this? In um, the link. In the link, in the, in, you know, like I have a, a spot on our website that says Live with Lisa. Yeah. I think she does. They're also listed in the description. Okay. Well. All right. So in the video are the, the links for these, for yeah. joyful gatherings. So this quilt, Jessica made this one. It's called Wrap Session. It's 55 by 55. It is um, sewn really fast and easy. And we'll probably do a quick little video on how this was stitched. But you actually like stitch strips and then you trim them down. So they, they're perfect, they're easy, not nothing too difficult there. So, uh, a question for you, Lisa. Yep. Are there kits for all of these joyful yep. projects that you're talking about? Yes, yes. I said that in the beginning. Uh, all the kits are ready to go. Uh, before we talked about this, we always everything was always on a pre-order. Well, now we have everything. So you don't have to wait. As soon as you place your order, these are going out the door. We have kits made for all the orders that we have, but then we always make more because now they're gonna go up in the store, they're gonna go up at the show. So we always make more than what we've taken pre-orders for, okay? We've done this for almost 20 years, so we kinda know that we're not gonna just make 12 kits and be done. We plan and plan and plan for to make many quilts. And by your, you know what your pre-orders do for us? They tell us what's gonna be the most popular kits. And then we, we use those numbers and then we, that's how we determine which one to make the most of, right? So that is very super helpful for us when you do do a pre-order, but you know, some of you don't like to do pre-orders. You just want to get it when it's ready. So this quilt right here is called Christmas Tidings. Beautiful, beautiful quilt, all half square triangles made with triangle paper, one and three quarters triangle paper, all right? Kind of a weird size, but it works. And then this big one, you don't need triangle paper for that big one. You can handle that one. So I imagine that's three and a half. Okay. And that one is 70 by 84. And that is our last project on this side. So we have a couple quilts on the back side. So I'm going to have Kaylee swing around to the back. All right, remember we're in the warehouse here. So this one here, can you see it good or do you want to come this way? Yeah, come on, come a little closer. There we go. This one is called Boxes of Joy. It is 79 by 97 and it is all squares. There's nothing, nothing hard in here. I believe it's a lot of strip piecing going on, that kind of thing to make these units. All right, beautiful background print in there with the red and the green going on. All right, 79 by 97 that one was. And it was called Boxes of Joy. And then last but not least. My favorite. What? My favorite. Kaylee's favorite quilt. This one is called Mistletoe. All right, so with that cute little pinwheel in the middle your traditional block here with this beautiful, this is Amy's favorite print in the line. We were just talking about kits and what we have the most of and what we're gonna run out of first. And she said, we're gonna run out of my favorite print. And it's kind of like, it looks like a sprig of evergreen with some berries in. So it's a beautiful print. This quilt is 60 by 74. And again, kind of uh, maybe like two inch, 
half square triangles here. And then these, I believe, are one inch. So you need one inch triangle paper, two inch triangle paper for that. But simple blocks, lots of space for your eye to rest. So we have busier quilt and then one with the blocks are more predominant like that. We have backings. If you order your kit, we do have backings at 20% every time when you order the kit and the backing at the same time. All right. Any questions on anything I kind of went over right now before we take a little intermission and go upstairs? Um, I do have one about the Madison show. Uh -huh. People are wondering if they can use gift cards or gift cards at the show. No, can't use your gift card at the show. We don't have our technology there. Uh -huh. I don't think. Yeah. All right. Then, but let me check, though, okay? And then um, a couple people asked if you'll ever be back to the Houston Festival. And I said, probably not, but I'm going to let you answer that. Yeah. What you don't realize is we built this big, beautiful complex here. And Houston is a long way away from Wisconsin. And not only um, does it take a lot of manpower to get us there, the, the trucks, the trailers, the overnight stays, the food, all that stuff when we can sell right here from home. And I know, I know, I know that we all wanna to go to a quilt show, but it really doesn't make good business sense when we can go on comment sold, like right after here, like we're gonna do a comment sold and we can do so well with that, that it doesn't justify the expense of the show. Now, I don't wanna say I'll never do it, okay? But I know, and you can tell how beautiful our booth is already starting to shape up. And I get it. I get it. But that, that back then, that was the only way to do, to make money. All right. Now we have evolved. And there are different ways to make money selling the things we love. And I believe it's a little more personal because I get to, you know, we get to communicate together. You get to ask questions. We get to give you prizes. We get to hang out for an hour or so. That kind of thing. And I know that. You know, believe it or not, the attendance to those shows is so down. It's so down. And if it would come back to what it was, but it, so far it has not. It has not. So I get that. And we do want to have quilt shows, but we're doing our best here to keep our Wisconsin one alive because it's close enough. We don't have 17 nights in a hotel. Okay. You want to add that up? Think about that. And it's not it's not a $200 a night hotel in H downtown Houston next to the show. All right. So you can kind of figure out all those expenses. We got to sell lots of fat quarters to make up just what it spent us to get there and back. And, you know, I like when we're on the road and my boys are driving home all hours of the night uh, with trucks and trailers and having breakdowns. That's that's a lot of stress. All right, on them and me. <laughs> All right, you got any more questions for me, dear? Um, yeah, when will the Christmas boxes ship? The Christmas boxes will ship in a, probably another week. We're just waiting for checking a few things and they will go out. But we're pretty much ready. We're pretty much ready. Jake, what? come on over here. So they want to know, about Houston and going back to Houston. I'd love to do it. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> but how many times have you changed flat tires? How many times have you had to have every your time. <laughs> every time? Every time something goes wrong, we go to Houston because we have an overloaded trailer. And I mean, it's just the only way I could consider doing something like that is if we had like a double setup, right? Where we drop shift a lot of stuff you come in almost like the markets they can write down exactly what you want you know pick it hold it up you know feel the kit and then we just ship it to you yeah you know mm -hmm. that'd be cool yeah that'd then we be... don't have to bring all of but then we have all those shipping charges yeah but if they spend over a hundred dollars <laughs> it's free anyways right yeah true so there you go yeah but i mean jake's had to have his trailer towed all that kind trailer of stuff towed. i've broken axles leaf springs i've ran out of uh spare tires like that's how many Luckily, that one time I got two flat tires on the same road, and I was able to walk to a tire place. It was that close. He, he is so lucky. The guy's like, oh, you got, you got the nails we threw out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he is so lucky, though. Like, yeah. every time he's broken down, there's always been a super company that has helped him yeah. out. 
We've always been very lucky. It's probably all of us praying uh, to make that happen. No, I've been very fortunate. Um, brought a lot of life skills. <laughs> yeah, you've you learned a lot, right? Yeah, I mean. Yep, to figure it out, how to talk to people, how to get things done. All right, Heidi, any more questions? We're going to go upstairs then? Going upstairs. Okay, we're going to take a little time out, use the restroom, do what you need to do, go grab another drink of something, and we will be back in about five minutes, okay? Yes, you can. We just had to shut everything back down and turn everything back on and then it worked. So Kaylee's pulling her hair out there for a minute. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so some of the questions, how do you order the Christmas box? So you go on our website and it's a one-time purchase. I believe, is it under 2023 Christmas box or holiday box? Holiday box, I think it's called. All right, so Jess isn't here. I can't ask her. She had an appointment with David. So pretty sure that's where it is, but if not, we'll figure it out. Go on our Stitch Group and ask there. So remember I told you I uh, made a boo-boo? All right, so see these two fabrics here? I'll have Heidi come and show you them. So my hand is on, so this triangle should be in this block. And this triangle should be in this block. So look at how close they are. So you see the pumpkins with the flowers and then the flower one with the pumpkins? I'm not taking that out, people. I don't care. I think it's awesome. All right? Uh, and Perfectly it was imperfect. Yeah, it was funny because like when we were like saying, oh, it's flowers. No, I said, no, it's pumpkins. Specialty boxes. Thanks, Roz. Yeah, okay, are. Roz came up from shipping. She's like right below us. Yeah, I'm like, oh, specialty boxes. All right, so there's a Christmas one and a gift one. You can do a deal if you do both of them. They, they could give you $10 off, or you can order them both separately. And we do a Christmas box in August. We say Christmas in July because that's when you order it. Ships in August, in the middle of August, and then the gift box ships in December and the December box is not Christmas stuff. It's a gift. It's like everyday stuff and not Christmas stuff. So thank you, Roz, for saving the day. All right. So now what I want to talk about is Black Star Flower Farm. So here's the first block. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to be doing. So this is the block. It's on a homespun background. So the front and the back are exactly the same on this one. You have a fuzzy side and a flat side. So you decide what side you like best. I like the fuzzy side. So I made sure that my blocks always had the fuzzy side up. Now, I have something very special for you. Um, and I just want to show you, it comes two ways. It comes the wool version or it comes the cotton version. So there's the cotton version. So it's all homespun cottons. So if Kaylee can get a great shot, perfect. That looks beautiful. So do you see these are, if you're allergic to wool and you know how to needle turn, you, you turn all of these under those edges. Very, very awesome that way. But we, we sell kits for both, but when you buy the kit, for the cotton version, you get all the fat quarters at one time. And then you, we just ship you the pattern each month. All right. If you order the wool version, you can order this as a full kit. And again, these are going to be on comments sold with us. So you can order it there as well. But you can order this as a full kit and pay in full. And you will get the background and the first block. And then each month, we're going to ship you the wool kit and the pattern for each month. Now, this is an ongoing project. I just want to point out that it is, this is just a rough draft here. It's 12 blocks and then a center block. So, and then we're going to have sashing, 
stars and borders. So I have some fabrics over here. So when maybe we show this other angle later on, Kaylee can swap over here and show you those fabrics we have picked out for the sashings, the stars, and the uh, borders. Okay. You also, uh, if you pay in full, like I said, that is, it's much cheaper to pay in full. If you pay monthly, it's a little bit more expensive, like five or $10 more a month. I don't know exactly. But if you pay at one lump sum, it's easier for us. We don't have to charge your card each time, that kind of stuff. And I can just kind of show you a couple of the other blocks. I have all 12 blocks done here. So there's a couple baskets. There's a couple just flowers. All right. So they're all beautiful, beautiful blocks. I'm not going to waste a lot of time going through them all, but I just gave you a little peek at them. So now the pattern for this will be free on our blog. And Heidi's going to post it on the blog shortly after our uh, live here. Is it going to be after comments sold too? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. All right. So later today, we, it will be up on our website. So this is what you're going to get if you order it. Um, you get, like I said, monthly, you're going to get the kit here, whether you pay in full or not. And then you're going to get the background hunk for the with the first block, whether you buy it monthly or whether you pay in full with the wool version. So this is what you get. Now, I have a super fun thing I'm gonna do because I'm gonna completely do another block here. I'm gonna take this fabric, I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna cut three blocks because that's what the directions say. In here are my directions. So I don't know if Kaylee can really swoop up on here or I can maybe walk this around. But it gives you a diagram here. There we go. On how to cut your 12 blocks, your sashings, your big block, and whatever that is down there. Okay? So we give you a diagram on how to cut up your four yards of fabric here. And I'm going to do that shortly, but not right away. There's that piece I was looking for. You know, you ever you get ready, you prep, and you're like, okay, where's my stem? Where's my stem? After you cut another one, that's when you find it. So you're going to take your pattern and it's you're going to cut off, you're going to trim off this line here on the red and you're going to tape them together. So this is my full layout here. Oh, let's do the light here. Okay, there we go. So I got the full layout right here of my block. And then these are my tracing pieces here. You're, we're not going to trace from here. We're going to trace from these pieces down here. All right. So I have done most of the tracing already on the Heat and Bond Feather Light. That's what I used. And I have one set to trace yet, so I thought I would even show you how I trace. So Kaylee's going to come around here, and we're going to talk about how I did that, how I trace. All right, so I've already, this tells me what wool it goes on. And this is the size of wool we cut in your kit for each one. So I've already traced this whole page here already. I only have this piece right here to do. Where are my camera here? These gray pieces here. So I am just going to put my fusible web right on here. And I am going to tra trace those for you. So I'll just keep tracing. I like to trace with a fine tip marker. I don't care what color it is. And when you trace, you're always looking ahead. That's how I can trace so fast is because I'm not looking where I am. I'm looking ahead. Now, if I wiggle a little bit, it's okay. When I cut them out, that's when I straighten out my wiggles. So I'm doing this pretty fast here to get it done. 
no pressure, right? Tracing on camera. I don't like pointy things either. I don't know if you've noticed that, but my leaves are never pointy pointy. I like to round them off. Now, if you trace exactly how I do, you will then rough cut around the perimeter about a eighth inch away from the edge of your tracing and cut it out as one whole piece. All right, now I'm not gonna trace my stems here because I wanna put my stems on the steam -a seam too light because this is tacky and it'll let me bend my leaves or my stems how I need them to go. And you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when I do it, but you're gonna take a piece of fusible web of this, that steam -a seam too and you're gonna cut it the same size or a little bit longer according to this diagram here. So now on each and every one of my shapes, I'm gonna slide over here onto my cutting board, Kaylee. I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I usually use my little one for this, but I don't have my little one here. So I am gonna use this big one. So see how I'm about an eighth inch away around the perimeter. And I did that on every one of my shapes. See, I cut them, trace them all and cut them all out like that. I'm just gonna leave them there. All right, I'm gonna slide my box this way for a minute. I'm gonna take my wools and my sheet. All right, so the always in order here, as in here. So the first one is gonna be the bottom and it's just gonna go up to the top. So my first one is my six by 12 and a half for the basket. So this is gonna go on here, plenty of room all the way around. But I'm just gonna slide it over because anything that doesn't have fusible web on it is still good to use. So I'm gonna pick up my iron and I am just going to use the heat of the iron. You do not need steam on paper. So I'm just gonna always keep my iron moving and make sure I get it down really, really good. I forgot I gotta cut all this out too. <laughs> I should have some helpers. All right, now the next one is the black texture for the bird. So I'm gonna find my bird in here and I'm going to put him on iron as well. Now all of these videos for Black Star Farm that we do will be on a little sub channel or a sub place that you can get those and look for them at any time. So now this one is the wing and the flower middle. So where is that? That's this one here. So don't waste time cutting out all of these shapes individually. That just wastes time and all, all about getting things done good and fast the first time. So then this one is the dirty snowman. So yes, yeah, so the black did not bleed onto this cream. It is meant to be modeled like that. Now, if you want, if that little fold in there bugs you, you can always put some steam on that. And here are my dirty snowman wools. Now, is there a right or wrong side? All right, on this one, these other ones were more mill dyed. They're the same on the front as the back, but this one is different. So what I do is I look at my wool and I find out which one I like better. Now, no matter what, it's not right or wrong. You just like pick the one you like the best. So if I like this side, I'm gonna put the fusible on the back side because all we are really doing is making iron on shapes. So I'm gonna slide it over to save as much wool as possible. And with this feather light, you have to make sure you get it down good. If your paper is not peeling off good when you're trying to remove the backing, it's because you don't have it done, because you can't just go like that and be done. You have to really get it down good. You have to almost overheat it. So there's that one. Hey Lisa. Yes. So um, 
there's a viewer who noticed that the rule book recommends schema theme. Yeah. Um, but you have been recommending. Uh, right. Right. So she wants to know if there's any difference. In right. Yep. Change. That's a good question. So my book has been out for a while now. Now something has happened to the Steam Seam too light. It has gotten really tacky and really, for lack of a better term, gunky. It really gunks up your needle and it's hard to work with. So we've come up with using the Heat and Bond Featherlight now. So it's probably been four years since my book has been produced. And guess what? The next time we print that book, we will add in the feather light. So if you love using the feather light, no worries. You can still do that, right? But some people, it just frustrates them to no end. So we've kind of switched over to, um, to this uh, feather light. Now, I want to pull my, I just kind of remembered, good thing I pulled this down because there's a couple shapes here that have the stems on it. And that's the one I'm using the steam seam. Now, why can I use the steam seam for the stems and vines and not the appliques? I know some of you know. Do you wanna know what it is? Because we don't really stitch through the stems. I cross over them. So I'm just peeling. So the steam seam too light has a backing on it. So you pull it off and see how tacky it is. It's like super tacky, but we want that for our stems and vines. And like I said, that will show up here in a minute. So I'm gonna put this along the bottom edge, put on my steam seam, look at that, it works. Or not, put on my fusible there, put that one down, make sure that one's on good. Great question, whosoever that was. All right, so now I pre oh, I got to do that other stem here. So Heidi, when you got a minute, can you go grab my scissors from the other, my sewing machine in the other room? Thanks. All right, so now I have everything down and good. I'm going to do some of the easy things first. So now... Put my cap, I always lose the cap. I know I should put it on the back side, but some of me doesn't always get that. All right, out of the way, out of the way. Put that back over there. I'm gonna need this over here. Okay. Missing in action. What's that? They're missing in action. Missing in action, you can't find one? Yeah. Well, maybe there's one in a drawer here. I mean, I have just a regular old scissors. Is there one in this drawer right here? Fancy scissors. Do you look in all the drawers? Yeah. Okay. Haley, I think you had one in. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. I'm opening another one. Oh, darn. You know how many of these I have? Okay. So this is the scissors that I love to use for all of my wool cutting. All right. Oh. Right there. So it has our logo on it inside the blade here. And it is super fine, super sharp, lightweight, super lightweight. Now, some people don't like how little these holes are. Well, we're not doing this, all right? You're using your fingertips in here. So if you have chubbier fingers, we're not doing this, okay? We don't cut like that. We cut very fine, with our fingertips. And this curve part is always the top, right? All right, but first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut our stem or our basket handle. All right, now do on here, I wanna make sure that I do this right. So 3 sixteenths, da, 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 da. Stems, brown, 3 sixteenths. Okay, I wanna make sure that I cut it the right side. Like I didn't want to cut it a quarter. I didn't want to cut that handle a quarter of an inch. All right. So now if you're new to this, if I want my stems and my vines to look or my basket handle to look a quarter of an inch, I have to cut it smaller because by the time I stitch and do that cross stitch over it, it's going to look a quarter of an inch. So if I cut it a quarter of an inch, it's going to look like three eighths. So if I want it to look 
a quarter of an inch, I'm going to cut three sixteenths. Now, I have this specifically designed ruler to cut three sixteenths in multiples. All right. So now I think for the basket handle, I'm going to need more than one strip. Now how, so the basket handle comes up, but there's plenty of broken spots on here where I'll be able to tuck under an end if this doesn't make it all the way around. All right. Am I too quick for you there? Mm -hmm. All right, so come back over here. I don't want, I want them to see this. Someone says, off subject, but I'm curious about your tattoos. <laughs> yep. Okay, so someday we can talk about those. All right, so I'm just gonna trim off an edge. And then I'm going to turn it. Now, my ruler is right-handed and left-handed. So if you're right-handed, you want it to say right-hand side facing you. So now I know that I probably only need two strips of this handle to make it all the way around. So I'm just going to put it on the two. And then I'm going to cut one, slide it over, and then cut two. Instead of picking it up, moving it over. I can cut multiple, multiple stems at one time. So now here's my basket handles. So I'm going to set that there and I'm going to do the same thing for the stem. So on this one, for the stems and vines for the leaf, I'm going to cut this one as close as I can. Now this wool is used throughout the whole project. So I'm going to cut as many stems as I can. And it looks like I can cut mm, six out of that little piece what ruler is that in particular it is my stem cutting ruler it's specifically for this job so now i'm just going to move it over cut another one move it over cut another one now you can't do this with just a normal ruler yes you can cut three sixteenths but every time you're going to have to pick it up move your stem aside and go so there, so see how quickly I was able to create all of those stems. All right, so there's my stems. I'm gonna set them right here. It's my basket handles over there. And I could cut a couple more basket handles over there. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out my shape here. And what I do is I kind of keep my scissors stationary and move my wool. Something happening, Kaylee? Your battery's, battery's dying. Okay. I got some work to do here anyways. Um, your stem ruler, how long is that? Ruler? All right. This one, I believe, that's long. I have both my mats turned around. It's like 16 inches. And I have those in two sizes. And um, for long, long vines or for stems. And if you're going to get one, you get the, you get the long one because that'll cut short stems. If you can afford both, you get both because then you can cut short and long at the same time. When you cut, are you cutting to remove the marker line? Yeah, you want, you want to, oh, I was trying to see what my biggest shapes are. So when I'm cutting, I cut pretty much the line away because the shapes will be bigger on the other side. So do you see how I kind of just move my wool around and my scissors is pretty stationary? And again, I'm smoothing as I go here. And to tell you the truth, I like to do this too. I like to go in there, cut some of these apart so I'm not hanging on to those big shapes. So you can do that as well. So while I'm cutting, let's ask a bunch of questions, okay? You can ask me about this project. We can talk about some other things as well, but this will probably take me a good five, eight minutes to cut out, so. I have a question um, that 
is about some other things. As okay. Well. Um, gift cards on the website. Uh huh. Are they available to order? And if not, how do they go about getting gift cards? Gift cards are available on the website. And where do they go for that? Uh, I believe at, oh, so that's the old site. So I believe, uh, that's a Roz question. Yeah. They used to be on the bottom, but I know they're not on the bottom anymore. So they're more in a better place than they were. We'll find out for you. We'll come back to that one. Roz, come up and tell me. Here she comes. Is she coming? Yeah, probably. Choot, 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 right up the stairs. Here she comes. Yep. I think we should her. Yes, let's introduce Roz, okay? I'm like, you girls need to come on. Come on. Come here, Roz. Over here. We don't care. She's working hard in the sweatshop down there. It's probably like 20 degrees yeah, warm warmer down day. there, right? Okay. Gift certificates are available on the website. Go to your little head and shoulders, like you're logging in. Hit your head and shoulders. It's the very bottom one. It says gift certificates. All right. So there's like this little people icon. Is it on the right-hand side? Um, It's up on the right-hand yeah. corner. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. area. So when you log in, they're they're right there. I knew they were there, but that, they used to be on the bottom. They used to be yeah. on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not as familiar with our website. I so. was looking everywhere but there. I was gonna uh, say uh, I found it now too. Yeah. So very good. Wow. All right. Thanks, Russ. All right. So one of these days we're gonna slowly introduce my staff, mm -hmm. okay? Because Roz is down there answering your questions. When the phone rings here, Roz and um, Joanne and Joel and Palmer, they're all down there answering all your questions, figuring stuff out for you, helping it when the pattern doesn't, you can't understand the pattern. So they're awesome. And uh, that's why I stick up for my girls so much. So when I find out that somebody's giving them a hard time, you know, not, you know, if several people are giving them a hard time, I'm like, okay, people, I can't have my whole customer support staff. So if you want somebody to pick up that phone when you call, you be nice to them, okay? <laughs> All right. Because you know what? We're here to help you. That's why they're here. That You couldn't pay me enough money in the whole world to do that job. All right? I'm just saying. I, I would really stink at it. I'd be like, well, what do you mean you can't <laughs> figure that out? No. So that's why I do what I do and they do what they do. All right. All right, more questions. Do we rip the homespun background for our blocks like we do with the flannel? You can, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I rip the edges when I start. All right, so it, this probably will have a, a ripped edge on it. If it doesn't, mm, because if you think people freaked out about flannel, you, oh, they're going to really freak out about uh, homespun because it's not as heavy and stiff as uh, flannel is. Um, the quilt, the wool version is wool on flannel, correct? They want wool, on, wool on homespun. Wool on homespun. It's okay. on homespun. Everything's on homespun. They would like to know if are the borders flannel too? Homespun. homespun. So the, the whole quilt is homespun. Okay. Yes. And then does the fusible web keep the edge of the wool from fraying? You bet it does. And you're not working with pins and you know, I've staples and all that kind of stuff. I've seen thousand different ways that people use this. Now, what I like to tell people is that um, the way I do things is the way I do things. It's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's not the only way. It's the way I do things. So if you have a different way, you know what, do whatever you want to do, but look to see what I do, understand why I do what I do. And I've made hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of projects this way, probably in the thousands if you count all my wool projects and stuff like that. But what, what started this was is back in the day, everybody was using freezer paper to cut out their wool shapes, right? And I had just done fusible web with cotton and I'm like, well, why wouldn't I use fusible web on wool? And everybody's looking at me like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I'm using fusible web. So I started doing that before anybody else. And it's what I still do today. I just figured out another thing I'm gonna need, girls. Can you find me my tweezers? I thought I had everything up here, but I guess I forgot a few things. I don't, I think you might've answered this one already, but I missed it. So okay. Um, are you cutting right on the line or are you? I'm cutting the line away because this wool will thicken up on the other side. So when you see me cut, 
I'm cutting pretty much that line away or right on it. So you see that? I mean, you can still see a little bit of that black, but there's a lot of it still left on my shapes. And remember, this wool stuff is forgiving. It's not rocket science like piecing, you know, if, if this isn't pretty much perfect, it's not going to fit together. This is why wool applique is so fun is because if something doesn't work out, we just fudge and figure it out, right? We just do something else or we move it or we do it a little closer if we cut something a little short. So that's why wool applique is so much fun and so forgiving. And your pattern never sits next to your finished quilt. So nobody's going to know if you fudge something. I remember one time I was doing blocks. So all of this, I, I'm talking two things at the same time. So all of this stuff right here is all good wool yet. So you, if you want, you can take these. And I put these in like big, uh, are those half gallon jars I have? Or what are they? They're not quarts, but they're like, I don't know what they're at, but. They're big. So I put all my scraps in there. I don't save this little schnibbly stuff like this. I don't save this, but I save the big hunks like this. Nope, not that one. Black, the black Martelli one. There should be one in my drawer in there again. No? Who took all my stuff? There's a scissors. Over at the gathering, my stuff must all be slowly over there. But we're we got time. All right, so I didn't tell you this. So if you're listening, I'm going to give this pre-done block away to someone who purchases a full kit or a monthly kit today. So we're going to, anything that comes in today or this video, we're going to put all your orders in a stack and we're going to pull one out and you're going to get this block already done for you. How sweet is that, right? All right. Um, stem rulers. Yes. Are you the only person that carries those, or could they find those in, the, in like, a local quilt shop? If your local quilt shop buys them from me. Perfect. <laughs> I, I design them. They are mine, yes. But other shops, especially if they have wool, possibly could have them. If they don't, please tell them about them so they do carry them. They can get them from us wholesale. I would think that Moda would have them too, for sure, if they order from Moda. All right. Um, someone says, I have found some wools that still like to fray a bit when you are stitching. How do you handle that? I give it a little haircut. Oh. You can do a little fray check, but be careful with fray check because it do, if you put too much on, it'll leave a frosty edge. But I have used it. I use it to put on my homespun on the back of a mat before I stitch it. Tweezers are on the way. Tweezers are on the way. Will you ever bring back the apple wool mat that you had a few years ago? The apple wool mat is not my design. It was some uh, uh, two ladies, um, I'm trying to think of their names, um, who I helped get their patterns out in the world. All right. And since then, I have given them all their patterns for themselves. Now, I think they're retired, though. So I don't know if they retired with them or what they did with them. What you do with your wool scraps? No, no. What do you do with all your wool scraps? I put them in jars, and then when I need a little snippet, I go in there and find it. Or you can make little penny mats out of them, or whatever your little heart's desires. Okay, speaking of pennies, if they're looking for wool pennies on the website, where do they go to find those? I would assume under primitive gatherings, wool pre cuts, maybe. Yeah, that's Yep. Under the, um, if you go left of the logo, there's that little drop down menu and there's wool in there. And then within there, there's wool pre cuts. Yep. So there should be bundles, there should be pennies, there should be charm squares, all that stuff. I am not that familiar with our site. We had the old site for a lot of years, but this one is still new to me. So I am not the expert on this site right now. Sam is still kind of tweaking it. So. Yeah. And we're, yeah, we're still adding and moving and, adding more uh, products and 
categories and you know we're gonna do like all the fall stuff in a category all the winter stuff you know that we're still doing all of that stuff do you ever label your pieces wherever what label your pieces if i need to it's a complicated yeah if process. you want to if you need to if it's something that i can tell just by this layout then i don't okay guess what time it is now all right, I'm getting all my scraps out of the way. Okay, one more question. This is a good one, I think. Um, is it the same method of cutting uh, as far as cotton and wool goes? Cutting, cutting what? Pieces, pieces out? For the cotton? For cotton versus wool, is it the same method? Yeah, it is. It's, it's all, I mean, it depends on what method you want to use for cotton. If you want to do machine cotton applique where you're going to fuse down your shapes, then yes. If you're going to do needle turn, applique you know you have to add a quarter inch seam allowance to your shapes so i think if you already do that kind of method you already know what to do i, I know that sounds very vague but if you're a needle turn if you're going to pick needle turn all right you're going to know how to do that you're going to uh, take a class on that you're going to uh, know that method so whatever method you want to do that's what you pick or you, you figure that out with okay now i'm not going to cut everything for you but well maybe i will off camera but just for today i'm going to cut just the three 15 inch blocks because you don't probably want to sit here and watch me cut all of this do you Starch home, home I starch anything that I'm going to piece in patchwork. This is not that. All right. Uh, the little bit of sashing or the blocks being sewed. So we're going to we're going to cut our blocks 15 inches. Then we are going to trim them down to 14 and a half after we stitch them. And then when they're sewn in the quilt, they will be 14 inches. Finished. So when you look at this box, it's 14 inches. So this is going to have a, a, a little bit more out here yet. So these will have a quarter of an inch yet on each side all the way around that block. Okay. Well, we have someone who has gifted several yards of wool off the boat. What is the best way to felt it? Hot washing machine, hot dryer. If you can cold rinse, that's even better. You want to shock the fibers when you felt or full wool. It's called, actually called full fulling. Uh, that's really what that is about. But um, trying to get the best camera angle here. Line that baby up. There we go. I'm just going to put that right on the 15. And of course, where is it? Right in the edge of my mat. <laughs> right in the edge of my two mats so we're going to move that over a little bit more so it's in my camera area okay this is a 20 inch ruler i'm going to lay it on 15. i'm going to cut right here with my rotary cutter i'm going to line up the bottom line up that edge right there i'm probably going to go back and trim that edge too so i'm going to just get this out of here like that okay i didn't press down hard enough there out of there okay so now what i have here because it's homespun and the salvages are different on a homespun than they are on um, a regular fabric. I'm gonna leave the salvages on. That's how I'm getting 15, 15, and 15, right? I'm gonna get three 15s that way. Because I'm gonna trim down again when we're done being stitched. Put it on the line there. Looks good. Okay. And now this piece right here will probably be a smidge bigger than what I need. And it's actually 15 and a half. 
All right. So that's how you're easily going to cut those. Leave the salvages on because we're going to trim this after it's stitched. So now I'm going to slide my ruler over. Here's my three blocks. Right now, I'm going to make sure I have fuzzy side up. I'm going to make the decision for this person. They're going to get fuzzy side up. Fuzzy side up. And I'm going to move this here for now. Hey Lisa, do you pre-wash homespun? Nope. You do not. So let's talk about that. So this quilt, when it's done, and you might have heard me say this before, but I'm not letting anybody drool on this, okay? This is not a quilt that you're gonna snuggle up and drool with. This is a piece of art, all right? If you do put it on your bed, you take it off before you go to bed. This is not a snuggle quilt. Those are different quilts. Those are, you know, patchwork, whatever. This is not a snuggle quilt. This is a beautiful quilt. Yes, you can lay it on your bed or behind your bed on a wall, but that's what type of quilt this is. So people are noticing that you did not first rip your homespun before cutting it to get that straight edge. The edge was ripped straight. Okay. It was already ripped. All right. And it was and I'm going to, I just cut it. You can rip it if you want, or you don't have to. But like I said, people will freak out if I do. So <laughs> I did it. All right. Now they're freaking out because you did it. I know. Yeah. Make up your mind. <laughs> it's not going to be that big of a difference. These are 15 inch blocks. The fabric was nice and straight. You see that, you know, I didn't even have to do anything on there. It was cut. So don't, don't worry about it if you don't like ripping. If you love ripping, however, uh, that's a different story. Rip it. Don't be afraid. But I don't want everybody like, oh, mine's all crooked. Yeah, it's going to be crooked. And then you're going to have to go pull it on the bias to get it back straight. So let's go this way. I'm going to trim some of this off because I don't need it. All right, so do you see? My beautiful, awesome light table here. So it's a, just a touch on and a touch off. So if you, the longer you hold it, the brighter it gets. Now, just to help myself a little bit, I'm going to take a marker. And my graphic designer already did it for the stems. But just for the basket handle, I'm going to draw that on there as well because I don't really have a super light background here. I have a kind of a medium dark gray. All right, make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. All right, what more questions, Heidi? Um, somebody thinks you need a caramel break. <laughs> a what? A caramel break. Yeah, right? <laughs> After I'm done, we'll definitely do a caramel no, break. We need that, this in combat soul. All right. So I like that person, who is it? Oh gosh, it's already eating. Oh, Jean Waskowski. Okay. Awesome. Now, I don't know. Can you, you can see it. Oh, look at that. So you can see those thick lines in there. All right. So when I have a big shape like the basket, I'll just take my tweezers and I'll just take a big score right through the middle of it. And then I can just easily pull this away. So see how my fusible web, I should have did one where it didn't, where I didn't like, um, put it down all the way so it was hard to get off so I could show you that. But I'm kind of efficient and I didn't remember to stop. Now I laid this on here and I can see my line and I have at least a half inch all the way around that shape. I have some tape here. What did I just do with that tape? I'm just gonna tape down my shape, my background here so. It's not slip sliding all over the place on me. All right, so I'm laying that one down. Now I'm going to grab my stem and I'm going to pull this off like that. And I'm going to lay that under and just 
follow my line here. And then you see how it doesn't make it to where this stem is here? So I'm going to just come right here and cut it right where it's going to lie under that stem there. And then I'm going to take another piece of basket handle. I know I call it a stem. Little thing like this. And I'm going to touch them. And what's nice about this is you see how it has that pre-stick to it. So that's why we loved our Stima Seam 2 light, but it also gunks up your needle. Awesome. All right. So there, I have that done already. Now I'm going to take the other stems. I am going to look at my picture too, though. So you should have your picture here as well. So you know what goes over, what goes under, that kind of thing. Oh, and look at that. I, right where I busted that handle apart, the, the stem goes under. <laughs> oh, no big deal. Like I said, the pattern isn't laying next to it. So I'm going to go over it and nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care. Right, people? Say it. Doesn't matter. So we always like stems and vines in the steam -a seam You cannot do this with the other stuff. So this one might not be long enough for that. Tacky, tacky, tacky. Any more questions? We can still talk a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was just answering one about your light box there. Yep. Uh, they're wondering where you got it from. Yep. Did you tell them to go and use the link from my blog? Uh, yep. I actually just posted, uh, we're about to post a link to that blog post. So if they're interested in where to go uh, to get it, they can just follow the link. Right. So these light boxes, you can get them cheaper on Amazon than I can buy them wholesale. So do that. I will never sell you something that I, that you can get cheaper somewhere else. But however, if you do use my link, I might make a few pennies off your sale for affiliate. You get that, right? That's how, that's what people do now to make a few bucks when they're demoing a product and that type of thing. So just like that, I have all my stems on, but this one looks like it goes under this basket. So we'll do that one under. So this, tweezers is amazing and i'm going to show you why in a second so there i just pulled it under the stem there we go okay i got that one right perfect 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 come down all right now if you don't have one of these fancy light boxes what's another thing you can do you can just wing it all right Draw your 14 inch square and wing it the best you can from the picture. Or you take a plastic bag like this and you take your pattern sheet and you trace some of the main things on here and then you use this as an overlay like this. Like, okay, yep, this is in the right spot, this is in the right spot and you can use, I call this a redneck overlay. All right, so now I am going to find all my guys here and I'm just going to start picking up my shapes and looking at my pattern and kind of laying them down on here. Can you talk again about the um, overlay? Fusible, the fusible that you're using? Yeah, your favorite fusible. Okay, favorite. so my favorite fusible was Steam Seam 2 Light. And that's the stuff that's very ticky and tacky right now. And it's a pain in the butt. So I have switched and I've started using heat and bond feather light. It's cheaper. It's so much cheaper. Like Steam Seam 2 was like $9 a roll or a little or yard. Now the feather light is only like $2.39. So it's much more economical than the Steam Seam. But the Steam Seam has very cool things that we need for fusing down our stems and vines. So I still use those. So even though I have this light box here, 
And I know I could lay these flowers down. So I'm not steamed down. So I'll show you what I could do. I could pick this up, lay this down on here, get it in the right spot. So there's different ways you can do this. Like you could put this on, you could fuse it down, you could pick it up as a shape, but I just kind of wing it, all right? So depends on your personality. If you're a perfect patty, you do it how you want. And if you're not, you do it how I do it. And I just lay it down, okay? If you gotta be exact, be exact. Do we have these light boxes available here? They are on Amazon. Nope, I just the exact same one Heidi has posted a link for. Have you ever tried something like SF101 on the back so it does not stretch? You can do that if you want. I don't need it. And what weight Mine. Of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to ask what weight of wool do you uh, we use for this in the store? Dress weight. Dress weight. Not coat weight. Oh. Dress okay. weight. I'm learning all sorts of new things. <laughs> Seriously, over here. Like, okay. <laughs> Well, they have, they know what they're talking about, they don't do. they? Yep. And the, hey, how do you carry your light box? I'm like very curious. I don't. <laughs> you make Jess carry it. I made Jess go oh, get it from the retreat house. Stephanie said it was really hard to cram one in a suitcase. Oh, I bet. <laughs> but I bet you she made it home. They're home. expensive. Okay. This, this light box is expensive, but I use it every day. So I wanted this one. Okay. Get the heck out of using the window. Yeah, and there's there's other ones out there, but this one is the brightest that I have found. And I can see through even black wool sometimes on this. Or some of the ladies brought me fresh cut garden and they have black backgrounds. And I just did what I did, traced my pattern with that marker and made it work. And I could see through. So see how I use this tweezers too? See how amazing that is? Um, our fusible wool pennies, do they come with a uh, fusible web already on them? They do not, but we have, there's a string on here and it looks like a line. <laughs> we have fusible discs. So if you have pennies, we have, I think, half inch, three quarters and two and a half inch fusible discs that you put on the back side to make that work. They don't have to go all the way to the edge of the penny. Diana Rosenthal says she looks like an octopus when she's doing what you're doing and that you're very graceful at it. Yeah, I'm not too bad, right? <laughs> Where's the brown? Did I not cut the brown? Oh, this must be the brown. Um, why don't you talk about your books that you wrote, your wool, your wool Bible? Okay, so everything I'm showing you, I also have in my books, and it's my first one is called Wool, Needle, and Thread: The Complete Guide to Wool Applique. So everything that I have learned in the last twenty some years doing wool applique is in that book step-by-step, step, movement by movement, needle movement, hand movement. Uh, I bet you everybody can in this group right here can say if they have it or not and if they love it or not. Um, it's not about fancy, fancy stitches. It's about basics. It's about all the tools you need, your basic 10, 12 stitches. All, everything I'm showing you today, I explain in detail. I explain about needles. I explain about threads. I explain all those things in that book. So if you don't have it, it kind of is a must to have in your, in your sewing library. And it'll be good forever. You will reference it again and again and again, I promise. This one, I believe, is the 24 by 18. Okay. 
you're kind of winging these bottom flowers. So just know that. Not going to be perfect. I'm going to show you. It's okay. It's going to look beautiful. Is there a comment sold today? There is. And guess what we're going to have on it? Lots of things that we're talking about right now. And Jess has a lot of other cool things on there. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. She was showing me before she left to bring David to his appointment. So do you see how efficient you can become at this? One more black one. It always happens, right? Where's the last black one? It's usually like on my belly. <laughs> somewhere. Maybe it's under one of these things. Oh, never fails. I'm telling you. So if that happens to you, don't feel bad. It happens to all of us. Stephanie says it's past your bedtime. Oh, yes, yeah, Stephanie. She's talking to, she's probably in Qatar. Mm -hmm. That's in the Middle East. She just left here. She was home in Wisconsin for a while. All right. Where's the last little bud? Oh, well. That's why we give you a little extra, right? <laughs> Always check the scraps. Never fails. Especially when you're doing it on camera, sweating. Under the lights. Under the lights. The Thursday, Thursday lights. All right. Look at that baby. Look at how beautiful that is. Someone says, how did you how do you get it to the ironing board without losing all the pieces? Like we might lose a couple. Who knows? Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. Magic. Give it a little look. I'm going to straighten that bottom of that basket, even though it looks a little crooked. There. Somebody's going to be lucky. I hope it's you. All right. What do we do next now? How, how do they win that again? You got to buy it today. I know that's not fair to the you who already did, but you already bought it. So what can I do for you, right? You just came up with it, right? Yeah, I just, you know, I like to give things away. So whenever you use this iron, you should purge it. So I, I always forget to tell you that. So purge the line. All right, so now we just want to do tiny little presses just to get everything down. Make sure everything looks good. Nothing moved with the air from the iron. Okay, so now it's tiny little presses, always keeping the iron moving. And you should have an iron that has lots of steam capability. And I'm going to be talking a lot about irons coming up. So we have a brand new iron here at Primitive Gatherings that we're testing out. And so far, it's amazing. Because sometimes these buggers will snot all over your, your um, project. So we're hopefully going to get rid of that. All right, so now once I have it all down, I give it a press on the other side as well. Here you can actually iron out the wrinkles. Where on the wool, you can't do that. So it's always up and down on the wool. And you don't want to scorch your light wools. So always keep that up and down on the other side. So this Steam -a Seam Feather Light is very, very adhesive. I've never lost any of these shapes. Obviously, that tacky one is, too, the, um, for the vines. But look at how beautiful it is. How long did that take me? Too long? <laughs> Not too bad, though, right? OK, I hope this helps you. We, are, we will do stitching on the next tutorial for Black Star Farms. All right? All right, everybody.
everybody, this is how you're going to do all the blocks here on out. If there's anything that you need me to do a tutorial on for this, you let me know. But we are going to do stitching. We'll do trimming, some other things like that as well. All right, so I have to pick winners for this week's blog post or this week's um right now. lives. Yeah. Lives. I always think when I look at Heidi, I always think blog posts. Okay. If you hung around till the end, here you go. Michigan Gal 007, you won uh, a prize from Heidi and our live show. Anita Flatland and Nancy Black, you are all winners of today's live. So I hope you enjoyed our tutorial on Black Star Farms. Hope you maybe even got it in the mail already, but look for the pattern on our website if you are not purchasing a kit from us. If you are purchasing a kit from us, we are printing the pattern for you. We all know that not everybody has a printer. So we hope that you join us along. We do have these exact beautiful fabrics here ready for you and we'd love to ship them out. So hopefully a bunch more of you will join us in this and we will run out. That would make my day. All right, everyone, let's get to work. Bye now.